In the previous two videos, we have seen the definition of the dual problem of two linear programming problems in special form. We are now going to look at the dual problem of a general linear programming problem. Before we look at the actual definition, let's look at an example, just to illustrate what we are trying to get at. Remember that the idea behind forming the dual is to find a linear combination of the problem constraints that gives a low amount on the objective function value of any solution satisfying those constraints. So in this case, we want something that looks like this. Objective function on the left hand side greater than or equal to some constant, say gamma. And we want to get this inequality just by taking linear combination of these constraints here. As we have seen before, uh, we are free to take any constant multiple of an equation. So we'll say this I multiply by y1. Now this inequality has the opposite sense as the inequality that we want to get. So we need to multiply this by a constant that is non-positive. And for x1 greater than 0, we are going to multiply by u1. And x2 less than 0, we are going to multiply by u2. And u2 has to be less than or equal to 0. And so using this linear combination, we will get y1 plus u1 x1 plus y1 minus 2y2 plus u2 x2 plus minus y1 plus 3y2 x3 greater than or equal to 4y1 minus 5y2. Now we want this to be 1, this to be minus 2, and this to be 1 as well. And we want the right hand side to be as big as possible to give the best possible lower bound that we can get using this method. So we are trying to maximize 4y1 minus 5y2 subject to all these constraints, y1 plus u1 equal to 1 y1 minus 2y2 plus u2 equal to minus 2 minus y1 plus 3y2 equal to 1 and u1 has to be non-negative so remember that we want to maintain the same sense so u1 has to be non-negative and u2 has to be non-positive we can rewrite this so u1 has to be non-negative, that means y1 has to be at most 1. And if y1 is at most 1, we can get a value for u1. And using the same reasoning, we can rewrite the second equation here as y1 minus 2y2 greater than or equal to minus 2 and minus y1 plus 3 y2 equal to 1 and remember we actually have to have uh, we actually have to have y2 less than 0 in here if we find a y1 and a y2 satisfy all these constraints then we can get values for u1 and u2 such that u and y satisfy all these constraints and together that will give us a lower bound 4y1 minus 5y2 for the optimal value of the original problem provided that the problem has an optimal solution and in fact this is the dual problem of the problem that we started with now notice that in this dual problem we do not have the variables that correspond to these constraints so these uh, constraints are usually called bound constraints. So normally bound constraints are separated from the rest of the constraints and they are given special treatment in a sense that we don't really give them a variable in the dual. Of course we could have included them in the dual problem but we could write down a smaller dual problem in the sense that we have fewer variables in the dual if we just use these inequalities to give us the sense of the uh, constraints in the dual problem. And now let's look at the definition of the dual problem in general. So the problem that 
we're looking at is this. This is called P. And let me explain the notation here. A is an M by N matrix where the rows are denoted by A1 transpose up to AN transpose and AJ is the J column of A. All right, and B is a vector, of course, with M components. So what this is saying is, uh, I, I have here three different kinds of constraints. Okay, Those that are greater than or equal to, those that are less than or equal to, and those that are equal to. And for each of these greater than or equal to inequality, I'm going to have a greater than or equal to variable y1. So in, remember that we are going to multiply these things by yi, where this is greater than 0, because we want, at the end, to get something like this, right? c transpose x greater than equal to gamma. Now for those, that are, for those inequalities that are less than equal to, we need to multiply them by variables that are non positive. All right, and those are the things down here. And for equalities, we, we don't really care whether they're non-negative or non-positive. And usually we call them free variables. Now, as we said before, these constraints, well, the last one is not really a constraint on xj. These bound constraints only tell us the sense of the inequalities in the dual problem. And so this is how the dual problem is defined. 